Good afternoon. Um, thank you all for being here. Thank you, legislators, uh, for participating and being here with us. Uh, as you all know, Governor Edwards has created a transportation task force uh, a few months ago, and we have met uh, twice here in Baton Rouge, and we have actually concluded our third regional transportation meeting today, with the first meeting being in the city of New Orleans and the second in Shreveport, and the third being in Lake Charles. In each of those meetings, we saw over 100 and 25 citizens in each community representing planning and transportation stakeholders as well as, well as the economic development community. And so we're excited to see the efforts underway. And I think we're standing here today uh, to have an announcement from the governor about a very important project that demonstrates the comprehensive commitment to transportation that you've seen since January, whether it was the fast lane application uh, that received 60 million and then a follow up of another 40 million. Uh, whether it's the redistributed funds of 40 million that we've received, or if it's the actions during the legislative session to uh, prioritize transportation and double the port priority program and uh, advocate for a balanced transportation system. We have yet another uh, major announcement that I think speaks to the needs of every citizen and every freight uh, mover, uh, not just in Baton Rouge, but from the coast of California to Florida. And I think it's appropriate that we do this uh, in the middle of National Truck Driver Appreciation Week that the governor has declared uh, his state authority to celebrate National Truck Driver Appreciation Week because they're such a critical partner in our economic development. So with no further ado, let me introduce the governor of the great state of Louisiana, the Honorable John Bell Edwards. Thank you, Sean. <laughs> Thank all of you. Thank you, Sean. I appreciate your hard work and your good work at uh, DOTD. I'm proud to be joined by Sean and, and these legislators uh, up here with us today to announce a major development in my administration's commitment to infrastructure, to trans transportation infrastructure that will offer welcome to relief uh, to commuters between Ascension and East Baton Rouge parishes, uh, but not just to those parishes because I-10 obviously uh, carries traffic that emanates from all over uh, the country and certainly all over the state of Louisiana. And I am pleased to do this during National Truck Driver Appreciation Week. After all, about 30 percent of the traffic on I-10 uh, is actually uh, engaged in moving commerce, cargo. But you might be just moving a kid to soccer practice or trying to get to work or get to a ball game or whatever, uh, and it's going to be a benefit uh, to you as well. So with the support of the Joint Transportation Committee, the Department of Transportation Development is prepared to de begin a design build solicitation that would widen I-10 from Holland Road uh, to LA-73. Uh, from four lanes to six lanes, this stretch of road is approximately seven miles. And this design build process will also explore the possibility of elevating certain portions of that interstate. Uh, the need uh, to elevate was possibly um, demonstrated uh, last month. Uh, in fact, when an awful lot of traffic had to be routed through Prairieville because it could not uh, move along I-10 in this area. So Design Build is a project delivery model that the state has used before, and it captures the innovation of the private sector and pairs it with the resources of the state. The end goal is to deliver a project uh, at great value to the citizens, but also in a very timely way. And in fact, this Design Build process will shave off uh, three to four months worth of work and it will also save the people of Louisiana money. And the Department of Transportation Development has put together a plan uh, to construct this segment of I-10 using FAST Act authority uh, to repurpose certain federal earmarked funds. And it should be noted that if we do not use these funds, it is very likely that they would be swept away and sent to other states. And that's why we want to take advantage of this authority that we have under the Federal FAST Act uh, to make sure that we do not lose these funds and send them back uh, to Washington or anywhere else. We want to put them to use right here in Louisiana for the benefit of our citizens. The state will replace the earmarked funds dollar for dollar with other federal highway funds when those funds are needed and those projects are ready to move forward. And we are committed, I am, as governor, am committed fully 
to all of those other projects. The simple fact of the matter is that opportunities such as this uh, cannot be relied upon as the sole answer to our transportation problems, which is why, as Sean mentioned a moment ago, I created the Transportation Task Force, task force to, to comprehensively study our needs and also our revenue options to pay for those needs, whether they be uh, capacity or preservation. What we must have is a sound, sustainable, and thoughtful transportation funding policy to better care for what we've already built and to finance a multimodal transportation system that supports the Louisiana economy, and it would be a system that we can all be proud of. And so now I'm going to turn it back over to Secretary Wilson for more details on, on this project. Thank you, Governor. So this stretch of interstate that we're talking about on I-10 uh, is approximately seven miles, and people will ask, why did you select this, pro this project for this uh, allocation of funds? Well, I will tell you, it is one of the more congested areas that is ready to be built. Uh, while we said this at the FAST Act we'd mu and the FAST Lane application announcement, uh, we'd much rather be building and widening an I-10 from the bridge to the split. The reality is that project is not there. For this Highland to 73 project, we own all the right-of-way. We have already begun some of the preliminary planning, and it is one of the most efficient projects that can comply with the federal requirements to let this project within the next federal fiscal year. And so I will give you just a brief timeline that once we get approval from the Joint Transportation Task Force, we will put a notice of intent out in the public sector uh, on September 28 or shortly thereafter. And then we will issue the RFQ and the statement of qualifications will be due to the department before the end of the year. Through that process, we will evaluate those applications and announce a short list and issue the final request for proposals in February and then go through the review process. And as we stand here today, we will be prepared to issue a notice to proceed on this project next year this time. I am so excited that the Department uh, of Transportation and Development has been able to become extremely efficient and shave time off this design build process. Instead of waiting a 12-month window to procure something that's not consistent with the federal funds, we've shaved three to four months off this process without compromising any of the quality of the process or the needs for the project. I will also tell you that I support the governor and will uh, exert to the fullest extent of my authority our commitment to make every project whole that is being built and designed in this state. We have about $80 million of remaining earmarks or earmarks that are eligible, but half of those projects are projects that are going to be let this year. The other half of those projects, approximately $40 million, will be pooled together to fund this project. Those projects will not be let in time to prevent them from being swept as a part of a federal process. And so every project that has been funded with an earmark no matter how large or how small, if it fit the federal qualifications of being 10 years old or less than 10 percent, and it's a project that's moving forward, the state will continue to deliver on those projects. So with that, Governor, we appreciate your support and confidence in the department uh, to do the most important projects uh, in the state of Louisiana that will get people moving, and widening I-10 is definitely one of those projects. Sean, thank you. And in order to get this project moving, um, and as quickly as possible, Secretary Wilson and I are calling upon the chairman of both the House and the Senate Transportation Committees to convene a joint committee meeting as soon as possible to authorize Sean and the Department of Transportation and Development to begin the process that is outlined in law and in the process that we just uh, described uh, to you. And so I'm pleased to be joined by both uh, Chairman Havard uh, in, of the House Transportation Committee and Chairman Cortez of the Senate uh, Transportation Committee, and I would uh, ask them to come up in that order uh, in order to address this issue. Thank you, uh, Governor and uh, Secretary Wilson. I want to just uh, kind of reiterate what they have said. We are, it's a, a great opportunity for Louisiana today, you know, and I want to especially uh, thank uh, the Secretary and the Governor for thinking outside the box as far as uh, transportation funding sources for Louisiana. Uh, too, for too long, we've uh, you know, gone down the road of uh, not funding our projects properly and, and prioritizing the needs for Louisiana. It looks like uh, today is a first step in the right direction, and I will assure you as transportation chair 
for the on the House side, we will do everything possible for uh, everyone in this state, particularly right now. Uh, it, it looks like the needs are right here in uh, Baton Rouge, and that's where we're going to spend uh, these uh, these funds this time. But uh, I do want to reiterate what Sean said is that uh, no project that has been uh, moved or um, out of the uh, funding sources that will be done, and we're going to stand behind that commitment of the governor and Sean to get those projects uh, moving as uh, forward as soon as possible. And with that, I just, again, want to say thank you to the governor, and anything I can do or our committee can do, we'll be glad to work with you. Thank you, Ken. Thank you. Well, thank you, uh, Governor. Uh, Mr. Secretary, um, I, too, want to commend you to working with for working with the federal partners and utilizing all those federal dollars. Uh, one of the things that I want to commend you most uh, with this project is that it is not only needed, we have many needed projects, is that the public and the, and the, the citizens of the state of Louisiana are going to see concrete on the ground within a few years. And, and that's within a, year. Within a year, year. They will see the beginning of concrete being laid on the ground. And so um, the, the Fast uh, Lane Act uh, allowed for some funding for the Acadiana area, but I know I stand here with my capital region uh, colleagues, and, and I uh, see many of them who voted along with me uh, a number of years ago and the governor to support a lot of surplus dollars funding, I-49 North, and, and a lot of projects around the state. So all of the areas of the state have needs, but I can tell you having a business here on Perkins Road as well as in Lafayette, there are no two greater needs than in Acadiana and the Capital Region. And so, uh, again, I commend you, and I will do anything I can to support getting this moving forward. In fact, it's my intention, and I know uh, Chairman Havard's intention, to call a, a, a joint committee meeting as soon as possible uh, early next week. Perfect. So, thank you. Thank you very much. With that, we are open for questions, should you have any. Yes, sir. Yes, and Sean has probably greater detail. Uh, these were federal funds earmarked for specific projects, uh, but those projects have not moved, and the time limitation is about to expire, and they will not move in time uh, to, to prevent the forfeiture of those funds and, and send those back to Washington where they would go to other states. And so what we are going to do is we're going to repurpose, redesignate uh, those earmarks uh, for this project while remaining fully committed to the underlying projects, uh, and we will substitute other uh, dollars when those projects are ready uh, to move forward. And you also have some projects that were actually concluded, but there were a few additional dollars left over. And rather than losing those dollars, uh, we want to repurpose those, redirect those uh, for this project as well. Okay. Yes, sir. Well, the way this is going to work, the design build, we're going to request uh, folks come back to us with plans, and we're going to tell them that, that obviously what we want to do is uh, widen this stretch of interstate from four to six lanes, uh, some of which we might need to reconstruct in order to elevate. We will show them the part of the interstate that actually had to be closed because it went underwater, and then we will allow them to tell us how they think uh, we can best address that situation. And that's one of the good things about the design build process is we expect to get back uh, a variety of plans that might have different ideas about how to do that. Uh, and then we will take a look at it. Uh, but, but one of the goals will be to making sure that that same stretch of interstate that we had to close in August because of the flooding does not have to get closed uh, going forward. And of course, uh, uh, under the rule of probability, we'd all have to be 2,050 years old before, or 1,050 years old, I guess, before that would actually happen. Mark. How much money is, is available to fix the project, and is it going to cover the subsidized area? Yeah, I'm gonna, Sean has the numbers written down here. So um, the first thing, I'll just to clarify for, for Mark and for others, when we say elevation, we're not talking about putting it on structure. We're talking about a foot, possibly a foot and a half. Uh, depending on what the level of flooding was and the impact there. So uh, for that purposes, I just wanted to clarify that. In terms of the funding, uh, we expect to repurpose approximately 40 plus million dollars of a number of earmarks from around the state. So here in Baton Rouge, for example, there were five earmarks that totaled about 15 
to $20 million that are going to be used on this project that is uh, within the scope of using it. In other areas, we've identified projects that we can use these earmarks for that are already funded in this current fiscal year. We're going to replace those funds and repool or re reallocate those dollars to this project to make up the balance. In addition to that, we're going to obligate this project within the next year and we will cash manage it in the year after because it's going to cross a number of fiscal years during construction. And so we're able to use some of our own federal funds to prioritize this project and get it done. Prior to this, there was no estimated funding date. If you look at our highway priority program, this would be on what's called the XX list, which means we didn't have the funds to do it, but because we were able to leverage these dollars and move forward, we're going to make, a, make an amends to our process and incorporate those dollars in the subsequent federal fiscal years. So what's the estimated total for the whole project? Um, the total we think is going to be estimated to be upwards of $60 million. And in that process, I don't want to give you our exact mm -hmm. estimate uh, because the, the private sector that's going to come back to us in the form of design build teams will compete for things like time, uh, innovation in terms of dealing with the elevation and the flood. There may be some other things that we have not anticipated or identified uh, in the plans that we're putting together that they will be able to take advantage of. And so we will make those determinations through the, the course of the uh, solicitation. So what sort of projects are being sidelined beyond this? Well, again, no. Yeah. So no, no projects are being sidelined. So for example, it could be a program in our overlay uh, program. It could be uh, a safety project that was uh, funded this year that's within proximity of a project that was completed. So if a project had about a half a million dollars on it, we couldn't spend it anywhere else unless we did this reallocation. So we're going to take that half a million dollars, spend it on that safety project, that preservation project, or that bridge project that was going to be let. The money that we're using there, we're now moving to I-10 on this priority as opposed to moving it around. And so there are several projects around the state. And uh, my communications director uh, is not here. He's out of, out of state traveling. But we can get you a full list of what those projects are and where the allocation is going to go in proximity to be consistent with the federal law. Yeah. OK. <laughs> I don't have an update. Um, in fact, I checked on it just before I left the office. Uh, I will be in Washington tomorrow to meet face to face with a number of members of Congress, also with some folks in the administration, but also to include our entire uh, congressional delegation. Uh, I remain optimistic that we are going to get um, a substantial part of the, re the recovery um, assistance that we need in the continuing resolution. And that is a hard nut to crack now, but so. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of work to do, which is which is why I'm going up there, and and while I'm I'm pleased to be um, uh, joined by the entire congressional delegation, as evidenced by the letter that they signed. And by the way, uh, our congressional delegation is is entitled to, um, you know, uh, me telling them how much I appreciate their work on this federal fast act too, this transportation bill, because Louisiana probably more than any other state in the nation has won. In the first year of the federal government's implementation of the FAST Act, uh, because of the flexibility that affords us to move these earmarked dollars instead of losing them, but also because of the $100 million that we've already been allocated out of a total of an $800 million uh, grant program for the country. Uh, we, we have done better. Uh, you know, I didn't go look and see whether there was another state that got more. I cannot imagine. We were number four. Okay. Here we go. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. We were, we, we, we were, no, we, we were number four, um, but but we, we would have obviously done uh, really well in terms of, of the per capita award, but also the, the amount of, of highways that we have in our states relative to those other um, three states. So, Mark, you had a question? That's a great question. Um, as we travel the state and talking, uh, talking to communities and you look at what's happening here in Baton Rouge, Baton Rouge has about $5 billion 
of projects that they'd like to see done that really need to be done to sustain the economy here. At the end of the day, if, if you look at the revenue stream that we have uh, at DOTD, we are 100% funded just with the transportation uh, trust fund, which is generated by the gas tax. And the average driver pays approximately $108 a year. That's about four time less, times less than what you're going to spend for uh, a beverage, uh, an adult beverage. It's about five times less than what you're going to spend for season tickets, and about four or five times less than what you're going to pay for entertainment and, and dinner and food out in the community. At the end of the day, everything you own, buy, sell, trade, use to build and do your work, you use it for transportation. So I can't tell you today that we have the resources to invest in those projects. But I'm hopeful and I'm confident that the task force will come with meaningful, sustainable recommendations to join the other 25 states that have adjusted uh, their revenue package or their revenue stream to fund those projects. And if we get those dollars, things like looking at a new bridge in Baton Rouge, whether it's using tolls, whether it's using public-private partnerships, uh, if you look at the LA-415 connector, uh, if you look at the opportunities for rail to get people off of their vehicles, off of the roads, and commute and use mobility alternatives, uh, that's a phenomenal thing. So there's a lot of projects. There's also a lot of improvement in terms of technology to help people uh, get from point A to point B most efficiently with 511 uh, and other means of uh, transportation. So. Uh, on this project, uh, we will go through the procurement process, and next year, this time, we should have an announced uh, low bidder or announced recipient of the design bill contract, and we can issue a notice to proceed. Uh, the design bill process normally takes about uh, 12 months. Uh, we're going to start beginning uh, next week if the Joint Transportation Committee meets, and we will conclude it uh, sometimes in May uh, with a, an apparent winner, and we will proceed to do the contract, and he will have. 45 to 90 days, he, she, or the company of that partnership will have 45 days to, to mobilize and get started on the project. Record time for Louisiana and design bill. Um, we don't have an estimate of that because that's going to be a part of the competitive advantage. Because this is the most congested corridor in the state, we want to get folks in and out as safely and as quickly as possible, and that stands the same for contractors. And so we're expecting them to come in and bid days as a part of this to show who can get in and get it built the quickest, and we're going to reward those and put it in perspective if they can uh, move it very quickly. And there's one last question, I'm one last, last question. I'm just going to go back to Mr. Keith and your reference. Is this area the 30-mile old corridor that also introduced this earlier in the Oh, sure. It's one of the most congested parts of the interstate system in the state of Louisiana. Um, and really not just Monday through Friday rush hour traffic in the morning and the evening. Uh, it, I'm surprised at how often on weekends, uh, seemingly when there's no real reason for it, that you have traffic uh, stacking up in this area. Uh, and it's, it is a critical uh, thoroughfare that we need to do something to move traffic more quickly. Uh, and there are many others uh, in Louisiana as well. But for all of the reasons Sean mentioned, uh, this is the right project. Uh, at the right time uh, for the flexibility we've been given in the FAST Act so that we can move it uh, with these repurposed um, earmarked dollars. Thank you all very much.